came to the the subject had who knows how many questions. Where's the edge? Oh, you know, right. how could they be lying? Why are they lying? All these questions that come to your mind are certainly going to come to your friends and family and everyone on your Facebook timelines mind. So uh, you better be prepared to answer them. Well, hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're starting a new series. Eric Dubay, Ignorant Zealot or Professional Con Man? Now, I'm going to go through a radio interview that he did and where he answered 32 questions about the Flat Earth to help better prepare you to be the go-to person that all of your friends will be asking about Flat Earth in this, what he claims to be, growing and vibrant movement. Now we're going to do something a little bit different today, and that is that normally I do these videos by going over what's on the screen and doing a little voiceover on them. We're going to do something a little different today. That's right. Well, we're going to do in-person commentary on this one. So let's go ahead and cue up the music and have a look at Mr. Eric Dubay. Let's not beat around the bush, man. You know, to challenge the heliocentric model of the solar system is pretty blasphemous in today's world. So how do we start to unravel some of this stuff? What are some of the biggest red flags with our traditional understanding that should start putting those first cracks in the listener's preconceived notions? Sure. Well, just our common sense, everyday perception of the Earth, it is flat as far as we can tell. Uh, it is motionless as far as we can tell and everything in the sky is revolving around us, as far as we can tell. If okay, so right off the bat, Eric Dubay starts off with the Flat Earth Mantra, and that is that I am the most important person in the universe, everything revolves around me, and I am the ultimate arbiter of truth. Now, if the horizon appears flat to my eye, then obviously the Earth is flat. If the Earth appears to be motionless beneath my feet, the Earth is indeed motionless. If nobody told us otherwise, we'd logically assume that the Earth was flat, motionless, with everything in the sky revolving around us. And you can prove that this is the case as well, for instance, with the horizon. As you rise up, no matter how high you go on the top of Mount Everest, or if you go in a balloon higher and higher, as far as 20 miles up and higher, we've gotten independent balloons have gone up with cameras. The horizon remains flat all the way around and rises to the eye of the camera all the way up. Now, if the Earth were a ball, no matter how big, the horizon is said to be the curvature of the ball. So as you rose up, the horizon would stay where it, uh, where it was, and you'd have to look down if you're in a hot air balloon, down further and further as you rose up and up, and the horizon would be below you. But now his next move is to employ an NLP technique, and that is he's going to tell you the answer that you should think, and then ask you the question that he, he wants you to answer the way he just told you to. Now, in this case, he wants to get in the concept that the horizon rises to eye level. Now, then he turns around and asks you that basically, doesn't the horizon rise to eye level? Wouldn't you expect to see it drop if you were actually on a ball? Well, what he's not counting on is people actually have looked, and the horizon does indeed drop. So right there, he's basically defeated his own premise. The Earth is a sphere, and the horizon does drop and it's demonstrably so. But in fact, as high as any non-NASA, RASA, or other Freemasonic space agency has ever shown us. Now in my previous video, I used Eric Hoffer's book, True Believers, to look at the Flat Earth Movement as a mass movement led by people like Eric Dubay. Now, we've already seen the first two techniques that you can employ to do this. One, you have a growing, vibrant movement. Two, you are special enough to be part of that movement. Now we're going to introduce the next critical element, and that is the bad guys. Now, notice how he said, 
that you can do these tests or independent people have to do these tests as opposed to NASA, RASTA, or the Freemasonic space agencies. Now, what he's doing is he's setting up the other side. He wants a common enemy that he will lead you in the fight against. As far as any independent camera has ever gone up with an independent rocket or a balloon, as far as 20 miles uh, up, totally flat and rises to the eye of the observer. So that's one proof. Of course, you can measure uh, curvature if it actually existed. They say the ball Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference, and using spherical trigonometry, it figures out to 8 inches of curvature per mile squared. Well, unfortunately, that equation is not really correct. If you're looking at a tangent line directly on the surface of a sphere, it sort of approximates it. But in the real world, what you do is you observe the horizon from an elevation of some sort, even if it's just eye level at six feet tall. And then you look down to the horizon and past it. So the calculations become a little more complex. I would recommend that you have a look at Walter Bisson's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator if you would like some more details. The mile is squared, so for two miles it would be two times two, four times eight inches, 32 inches. And for the third mile, it's three squared, which is three times three, nine times eight is 72. So you're going eight, 32, 72, 128 inches, and so on. And this is the kind of curvature that would exist on a ball, and specifically on a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, as they say it is. So you can check with theodolites and telescopes and different methods, lasers, to see if the Earth actually does have that curvature. Indeed, when you use the correct Earth curve calculator and formula, it does precisely match the amount obstructed by the horizon. Here's a great example from Mount San Jacinto, 123 miles away from an observation height of 180 feet from Malibu, California. This is a superimposed photograph, Google Earth over an infrared photograph by JL Tolan, Media One. And as you can see, there is a horizon of the Pacific Ocean in black. You can see the amount of mountain hidden underneath it, and that red cross is at 6,230 feet elevation in that mountain. Sure. And it's been tested over and over again and found to have no curvature whatsoever. So, I mean, even if they had the number wrong and it was uh, 100,000 miles in circumference, there would still be a uh, calculable, measurable curvature that just isn't there. Now, mind you, I just showed you that it was. Yet, Eric Dubé will make the assertion that the curvature is not found and expects you to just take that on face value. I showed it to you. It is found exactly as predicted. The only place curvature exists is in NASA photos and videos, and those can be proven to be CGI fakes, and the early ones were literally taken through a round window to make the Earth appear round. Um, and that's it. It's just photo trickery and brainwashing that's got the world thinking that we're on a ball spinning around the sun with a magical force called gravity holding us on the underside of this spinning ball. Uh, okay, so now we have the great Satan NASA uh, brought up again. And we're introducing two new concepts. First, NASA, you know, being the great Satan can't be trusted. And so therefore, every photograph that has ever been taken from space showing curvature must, by definition, be CGI. And he's also introducing very subtly another concept here, and that is that gravity is not real. He makes no evidence as to why this is. He's just making the statement, just as he said a few minutes ago, that there is no documented evidence of horizontal drop or Earth curve, and we showed you in both cases, that there certainly is, and you can see it for yourself. Uh, it's all just brainwashing that we've received. It's pseudoscience accepted as, as legit science, but real science has confirmed geocentricity in the flat Earth for thousands of years. The flat Earth was, was known to ancient cultures all over the world for thousands of years, and it's actually a relatively recent phenomenon that people have been believing were on a big ball spinning around the sun. Pythagoras. You know, folks, I'm 56 years old. Uh, in my life, 
I've seen a few new things that kind of changed our world. Uh, microwave ovens, cell phones, color television. All right. Now, by very virtue of the fact that these are products of advanced technology that is evolving, it does not make them false. Yes, there may have been a time that the ancients believed the earth was flat. We've learned a little bit since Rome. As a matter of fact, since well before Rome. So this really isn't an argument that, you know, it used to be considered flat, so now we have pictures from space, and therefore we should ignore them as CGI, simply because 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, people thought the Earth was flat. That's not an argument. Pythagoras first came up with it about 2,500 years ago. He's also often considered the first Freemason. And considered the first Freemason. The first Freemason. Now, this is to take his ideas and associate them with the NASA enemy. But can anybody put a note in the comments that documents that Pythagoras was a Freemason? I'd really appreciate seeing that. If you can find anything, because I haven't been able to locate anything at all. But good luck to you, man. And uh, it didn't go anywhere much from there until 2,000 years later. Copernicus picked up where he left off, another Jesuit Freemason. And uh, he really picked things up, and Kepler and Galileo and Newton, and now Einstein and NASA, Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson, and all these people, they're, they're all part of this Freemasonic club that is building a pseudo-scientific worldview to... You know, even if it was true that people like Buzz Aldrin were Freemasons, that's great. I'm not a Freemason. I believe the Earth is round. How about you? Indoctrinate the slave class. Yeah, yeah, right. I think you make a lot of great points, man. And I think the curvature argument is pretty damn strong. And I pulled this off your website in the comments section because, to your credit, you spend a lot of time writing thorough answers to questions and responses to critics. And that's where a lot of my questions got answered. Well, I've gone over a couple of his points out of the 32. Now, I would like to mention one thing. This obviously is a very pro-Eric Dubay radio interview. They're just basically lobbing him softballs. They're agreeing with him. They're doing confirmatory research by going to Eric Dubay's website. Really? Really? But uh, let's go ahead and continue this next time, and uh, we're going to discuss lighthouses and things like that. So let's take a little break. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you get notifications when my little pearls of wisdom come out. And I'll see you next time. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.